Good morning, everyone. It's Yvonne here. Thank you so much for joining us. The hotel florist, Francesca McCohen, is here with me today. Super excited. We are going to be talking about the hotel floral industry, guys. So we're going to learn about what a hotel florist is, how this segment of our industry has been affected by COVID, and strategies on getting your foot in the hotel's doors. So exciting, right, guys? This may be a whole new segment that you've never considered, or you may have been just a little too intimidated to explore more. So we're gonna break it down and answer your questions live. Super excited. I'm gonna give everyone a couple minutes and hopefully everything is working well. I just realized that I'm gonna have to start all over for everyone else that is listening because I had to press a separate button in a different thing. <laughs> all right, let's see, hopefully this works. I'm going to give it a couple minutes, a couple seconds, and see. Okay, it says we're live. So I have this whole new thing, guys. I'm really, really excited because for Mornings with Mayish, I am streaming live on Facebook and YouTube like normal, but I'm also streaming live on Instagram Live. So hi, everyone, on three different platforms. Hopefully this works well, and if not, just please forgive me and have some patience. If for some reason this stops or we have technical issues, just know that we'll be back and we'll start all over again and pick up where we left off. Okay, let me see. I feel like we're good. Let me, yep, and I see us live on Instagram. Um, so I'm gonna just start from the top so that way you guys know what I'm talking about. And also I have a nice little spot to start for our podcast. So thank you for <laughs> having patience. <clears throat> Hello, it's Yvonne and thank you so much for joining us. The hotel florist, Francesca McCohen is here with me today. We're gonna be talking about the hotel floral industry and a I'm just really excited about that, guys. We're going to learn about what a hotel florist is, how this segment of the industry has been affected by COVID, and strategies on getting your foot in the hotel's door. So this may be a whole new segment that you've never even considered before, or you might have been a little too intimidated to explore on your own. So we're going to break it down for you and answer your questions live. If you have any questions for Francesca once we get started, be sure to put them in the comments and we will definitely get to those. My Instagrammers, I your questions don't show up in my feed in the system that I'm using. So I am going to be trying to pay attention to that while I'm looking at the chat as well. So fingers crossed that you know I can multitask pretty well. I also wanted to let you guys know for anyone that's new, uh, if you have to leave early, we totally understand. Schedules are crazy. You have work to do, kids to drop off, things to do. So the replays will be available pretty much immediately. Um, and then also there will be a podcast. So, and I post everything up on our blog in about a day or two. So you will have the show notes, a video replay, and the podcast all up on the blog. And you'll be able to get the replays on Facebook and YouTube right away. I'm not sure how the whole Instagram thing's gonna work, so we'll find out um, after that, and we'll go from there. Sound good? All right, let me bring on Francesca. Hi, guys. Hey, how are <laughs> I'm you? I'm so excited to be here. I know, I'm so excited to have you too. Thank you. I'm just playing around with the settings here. Let's see, because I feel like I can make you bigger. How do I do that? There we go. <laughs> I feel like I have a spotlight on. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this is the format guys. It's new. This is the only format that I feel like works really well with Instagram live because we are shooting a horizontal video. And as you all know, uh, Instagram likes portrait. So um, yeah. So welcome, Francesca. Thank you for being my guinea pig on my <laughs> new platform. I really appreciate it. And I'm just really excited to dive into this topic. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm happy to support any way I can. Awesome. Awesome. So before we get into everything, um, just let's start by introducing yourself and sharing a bit about your floral story. Absolutely. So I would say my professional career started in 2015 when I launched my floral business for Flower Design. And at the time I was living in the Middle East, I was based in Dubai, 
And I did what I was thought I was supposed to do. And that was weddings and events. And with, you know, just a couple of weeks under my belt with a master's degree in floral design, I started, you know, trying to book brides and do weddings and I enjoyed it, but it never felt authentically aligned. There was just something about it that just never really clicked with me. So about a year into my business, I actually moved back to the U S and I came to Houston and I decided that you know what, I kind of want to dabble in some corporate business. It was something about unreliable income that was really stressing me out. I had just gotten a new shop. I was really stressed every single month trying to figure out how to pay the rent and how to hire accordingly. And so I started focusing on corporate and specifically hotels. And I landed my first hotel account in 2017 and it quickly snowballed. Before I knew it, I was opening another studio in Dallas. I was Fairmont's artist, uh, Fairmont Hotels and Resorts artist in residence for six months. And then in 18, just really got burnt out. I was managing Dubai and Houston and Dallas and thought, okay, I'm going to have to consolidate and really niche down and figure out what it is that I want to do. At the time I was still doing weddings and events, but they were more so like the cherry on top to my regular kind of corporate business. So in 2019, I decided to niche down and I started the hotel florist, which offered turnkey floral solutions for luxury hotels and really just owned my hotel work, slowly started phasing out my weddings and my events. And then of course, in 2020, we all know what happened, COVID, and it affected every single industry. But I have to say that the hospitality industry has been extremely resilient and still has been my main source of bread and butter. The one thing that COVID did allow me to do was finally have the time to create a course called the Hotel Florist Profit Method. So now I am also offering education for florists who are looking to become hotel florists. And here we are in 2021 talking about my floral journey. I love it. So, so exciting. And I, we've never ever talked about this part of the industry before ever on this show. So again, just really excited to dive into this. I see Elda. Hello. So I know at least, uh, and that's from YouTube. So I can see that anyone on Facebook that's watching say hello. I would love to hear from you guys on Instagram. I'm going to bring that up on my phone too. And, uh, we'll go from there. So good stuff. Um, Instagrammers, the one thing that would be super helpful is I think there might be like a little question box. So if you could put your questions in there, that'd be great. Although I don't see it on my phone. So I don't know if you have it on your phone. Um, but just say hello and we'll we'll get to it. And again, reminder, you know if you have any people are alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Make sure we're all human. working. <laughs> Make sure we're working. And again, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and we'll get to them. Uh, my first question for you, Francesca, is so can you describe exactly what a hotel florist is and why is it different from a wedding and event florist? Oh, absolutely. So a hotel florist specifically has knowledge with different types of foliage, florals, botanicals that are going to last seven plus days. The main difference between a hotel florist and a wedding and event florist is that we are designing, I say we because I'm a hotel florist, but we are designing for longevity. So whatever we're putting in on day one has to look exactly the same on day seven when we're removing it, or if you're doing bi-monthly installs. So to keep in the time frame, the lifespan of your florals is like the peak of it. Whereas with a wedding and event florist, you're literally like crossing your fingers, just hoping it makes the 24 hours that it needs to in order to drop it on the table, put it in everyone's hands, and then clean up at when you're finished. So I'd say that's a huge difference, just the knowledge, having an understanding of what flowers that you can actually use, and also the design. I find that a lot of design with weddings and events is pretty trending, uh, you know, whatever's on Pinterest, whatever the new type of style bouquet is. Whereas with your hotel accounts, you have to keep in mind their brand standards. So how you design for a Four Seasons is completely different than how you would design for a JW versus a Westin. They all have their own botanical brand standards. And then on top of that, there's so much creative freedom that goes to it that you really have to create a signature style of your own, which a lot of times in the wedding and event industry, you don't have to do because you're literally trying to like replicate someone's Pinterest board. So I would say those are the two main differences. Great. Do you have um, certain flowers that you that are kind of like your go-tos that you really like to work with in for your hotel clients? 
I do. I actually have a guide in my course over 50 different types of flowers that I have discovered over the past four years. When I first started with this, I actually, um, Mayesh was my ride, ride or die. And I remember my rep, I would say, you know what, you've got $100 every week. The color palette, like just make sure it's all monochromatic. And I started something called the flower bar. And one, it was a marketing uh, tactic for me. I was new in the Houston market. I wanted to get people through my door so they would come in and build their own bouquet. But also it allowed me to learn about the different types of flowers and what were, on the mar what were in the market during different times of the year. And I would always set one stem aside and I would have it sit in the back for a week just to understand its lifespan. So given how I started to build up my knowledge and then the past four years of actually using everything, I have over 50 different types of flowers that are my go-tos. But for example, this week we've just installed Alstroemeria and pin cushions. And the reason why we went with Alstroemeria, which Alstroemeria, Alstroemeria and carnations are my go-to if like you're in panic mode, which we all are right now, given the current uh, market situations with supply chain management because they're readily available and they're relatively inexpensive, but it's the way that you design with them that you can still make it feel very luxurious. I love it. I actually love Alstro. They're just like little mini lilies that don't smell because I'm allergic to lilies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, love it. Um, I see a, a bunch of you guys saying hello. We have, hi guys. I know. Hi, everyone. We have people from Mexico, obviously the U.S., Belize. Wyoming, wow. Belize. So exciting. Um, but, you know, it seems like people are excited about this one. Like Erin is, she says, good morning, all from Wisconsin. Super excited for this one. And thank you so much, Erin, for joining us. Huntress Floros loves Alstro too. So yes, it's, you know, it's you can never go wrong with Alstro. Like, honestly, it's always there. It's colorful. It's affordable. It's yeah, it's a great go to. Yeah, love that flower. Very good. All right. So you mentioned it a little bit. We've all been affected by COVID. Can you talk a little bit more about how this segment of our industry has been affected by COVID and what florists can do to kind of help add value to this hurting hospitality industry? Absolutely. I think, you know, it was twofold. It was the floral industry was hit extremely hard because weddings and events practically went away. And the hospitality industry was hit very hard because travel went away. And so, you know, it's like, how do we navigate those two industries that are really hurting right now? And I can really only give my exact experience. I know that every market, every country, every city is different based on government ordinances about, you know, if they're open to travel or not. I can tell you personally, when I installed this week at one of my properties, there was almost a line out the door. There was four front desk agents checking people in. They're solidly booked on the weekend. So it's almost as if it hasn't even happened. But the one thing I have to say that really, I was even thoroughly impressed with is that I only had one month last year where I didn't have business, just one. And it was because the moment that the hotels were able to open again or reallocate budgets, they immediately brought me back. And the reason for that is because they have to hit certain brand standards in order to fly that flag. So a lot of people don't understand how a hotel technically works. So here's like a really basic explanation. You have an owner who owns a building and he wants to make it a hotel. So he goes and finds a manager to manage it for him. Now that manager is like a Hilton or a Marriott or Four Seasons, and they all come with different benefits and they all charge different fees to manage that hotel. And so in order for the flag to continue to fly on that building, they have to hit certain types of brand standards to keep the flag. So Fresh Flowers, for example, for JW, is a brand standard. So even though we weren't able to install weekly fresh florals, we did come and install monthly dried and preserved florals, which actually gave us a better profit margin because we didn't have as much cost. We already had a lot of supply. And so through the entire year, I still had my consistent income. Whereas I feel like a lot of florists, especially wedding and event florists, didn't have anything to fall back on. And so that's why I'm so passionate about hospitality floral design. I, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm I'm not staying at very nice hotels, but my, my daughter plays soccer, as you all might have known, because I talk about it often. Um, and she travels. So we like 
we stay at a lot of hotels and we have been this whole entire time. Um, but lately for certain things, there's been times where we have like a hard time finding a hotel room <laughs> to stay in because they are booked. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's exciting to see, right. And, and, you know, people getting kind of back to a new normal and, and that's really, really great. Um, mm -hmm. But I love, I love that, you know, the, I like your explanation about how, they have these brand standards that they have to maintain. And, and some of those include having flowers, which I had no idea, which is, which is really great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we know a little bit more about this brand standard that hotels need to maintain. So for those that are not interested, what is the best way to get their foot in the door and start working with hotels? So I have found just working with students in the hotel floors profit method that the big thing that it gets in the way is this lack of confidence or just being a little bit intimidated on like, how, like, where do I even start? Like, who do I even talk to? What do I even say? And the first thing I always say, and even though it sounds really, really simple, is literally two things. You're going to go on kayak and you're going to look for four and five star hotels in your city. That all of a sudden becomes what I like to call your victim list. So you know that those hotels most likely carry a flag that most likely requires some sort of florals or botanicals in their hotel. Then you're going to go and visit those hotels. And that could be as simple as going in and having a coffee in the morning or maybe having a glass of wine at night at the bar, but like literally going in as a guest to understand like, what's the vibe? Is the lobby busy? What do they already have? Where could I add value? Like, what do I feel is missing? And what happens is as you're in the hotel and you're absorbing the environment and really taking note of what the brand is and how it adds value you know, to the city, how is it authentically local, is you are technically a guest, you're not a vendor. And so that insecurity or that lack of confidence of like having to go and like pitch your services, you don't even have to worry about for this first go around because you're there just as a guest analyzing, you know, where it is that you and your business could add value. Now, depending on how that goes, I recommend that you can ask to speak, you know, to the director of operations or someone that handles the flowers of the hotel. And that's like a whole another subject. But um, it gives you the confidence to actually pick up the phone or actually have that in-person meeting because you already know what's happening in the hotel. So you come in with a lot of knowledge and you also come in with a lot of ideas naturally as the business owner and the leader that you are that you can pitch to support the hotel. Right, right. So how do you figure out who to speak with? Is it, do you just go up and say, I would like to speak to the director of operations about flowers, about your flowers? Like how, how does that work? So typically the main decision maker is going to be the general manager and, and or the owner. Sometimes the owner sits in management role in the hotel. Oftentimes it doesn't. So I always just say the general manager is the person that's going to sign off on your proposal and that's going to sign your checks. Now, the likelihood of actually being able to speak to the general manager just off the bat is pretty slim. If you're ballsy, like, I mean, I totally would go in and ask to speak to the general manager. You can do that, especially if you're already a guest of the hotel. Um, you know, you're just coming in and saying, hey, I've noticed that you have fresh flowers. I love them so much. Does your general manager have five minutes where I can just talk to him a little bit about, you know, the flowers and where I think our company could add value? Or you can ask to speak to the director of operations. The director of operations sits underneath the general manager and typically is the one that sources uh, other vendors for the hotel. And if you find that you're not able to reach either one of those, I always recommend going to the director of sales and marketing. She's more of like the fun. He or she is more of the fun uh, management of the hotel. And they're always looking for value add and fresh florals for their own clients. And so that would be the, the hierarchy. First general manager, they're in director of operations mm -hmm. and then sales and marketing. Very good. Very good. And then I got a question in from uh, Albert and Floral uh, on Instagram and they asked any suggestions or advice on how to get the hotel contract. So I'm wondering like the whole like contract proposal kind of how, how does that all work? Because I'm imagining it's different than putting together a wedding proposal. Definitely. So first and foremost, you have to get the meeting with the right person, which we just reviewed who that is. That's the general manager or the director of operations or the director of sales and marketing. 
then you're going to walk the property with them and you're going to understand what it is that they need to have, they want to have, what they've done in the past that worked or didn't work. Again, in my course, I have an entire list. It's 35 questions that you should ask on your first walkthrough that really one paints, you know, positions you as the leader that you are and that you have expertise in hospitality floral design. Even if you don't, it's just as long as you ask the right questions, you're going to get the right answers and then naturally you will be successful. Um, and then they're going to tell you what it is that they need. You're going to put together their proposal. You're going to submit the proposal for sign off. There's typically a negotiation period to it. They sign off and then you get started and you do your designs and you fulfill the account, whether that's 12, 24 or 36 months. Very good. So what is the typical contract length for hotels? I would say on average, it's anywhere between one to three years. Uh, I'd say most common, it's going to be one year, but I have seen, I actually have a student right now who's just been awarded a three-year contract. Wow. Uh, so I would say anywhere between one and three years. So that's why it's, it's amazing because this is your consistent income. It's not something that you touch again until the end of the contract. It's money that literally shows up in your bank account every single month and which frees up all that headspace to just be able to plan and to order and to design and then figure out how to build your business in a sustainable way. So that is the guaranteed lifespan of your contract. Very cool. Guys, can you imagine having a contract for three years or even one year? I think that's amazing. I mean, I feel like most of us are used to kind of thinking about it on a daily or event level, right? And this is completely different. So very cool. I love it. So I have to admit, Francesca, when I think about hotel flowers, I think of like Jeff Latham and like big giant lobbies filled with flowers. How often does something like that happen compared to, I'm imagining that most of it's maybe like smaller scale, like table things. What is kind of the mix of what hotels are really looking for? So Jeff Latham, and if we're just going to take like the George Sonk and probably actually probably all his Four Seasons properties, but we'll just take George Sonk. And I don't remember the actual figure, but it's it's millions of dollars in their annual floral budget. Right. Um, and again, that depends on the owner. He's even told before, and I'm a big fan of Jeff Latham. I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but Prince Alawid, who I actually worked with with Fairmont Hotels and Resorts because he owned FRHI, he is you know a Saudi billionaire, and he owned the or he did own the George Sonk. He no longer does, but he's the one that determined what the floral budget was going to be. So again, there's that that ownership and that brand that determines the budget and signs off on the floors. And so it's been amazing for Jeff Latham's career because he was able to basically learn on someone else's dime, but also have that creative freedom to have, you know, basically these beautiful floral insoles that he's become very famous for. Now, right. most hotels on average are going to spend, and I, I always say, you know, consistent $5,000 months, because personally that has always been my minimum. And it's what I've seen in the industry, but hotels spend anywhere between about $1,500 to thirty thousand dollars, um, sorry, fifteen hundred a week up to like thirty thousand a month. So it is a wide range. It depends on the brand, it depends on the owner, it depends on the city and the location. So, for example, a property in London um, is going to have a huge floral budget versus a property in Delhi or Mumbai that might have a huge floral budget, but it's going to be a fraction of the cost. Um, so what I would say consistently is $5,000 months. And that means the hotel is paying the florist $5,000 or more per month for the weekly floral installs, or maybe a florist has uh, two or three smaller accounts that are maybe $1,500 for, for the month um, that will add up to that 5,000. So you're definitely looking at between 1,500 to 30,000 for the month. And that's why I always say $5,000 months. Right, right. So let's pretend that I'm, I'm a florist and I really want to focus on hotels. Like how many hotels do you think makes sense to take on? Like as many as I can, or, you know, everything takes work and time and planning. Like what do you think like one person, like entrepreneur could handle? So it depends how big, 
um, your hotel accounts are. But I think the great thing about this business or this segment is that you can easily bring in freelancers or contractors to help you. I know many times, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I have outsourced a lot of my hotel work to freelancers. So I'll still do the design and the ordering, and then I'll submit a recipe and then they basically come on property and they execute it. And that has worked really well for me. You, depending on what you're installing, typically you're only spending about a day. So let's say you're doing all the work. So you're, you're spending a day installing, let's say a pretty large install. So a hotel is going to spend around 5,000 a month. You're probably going to spend about six to eight hours a week on that one account that leaves four other days. So let's say you had two smaller hotel accounts. You could do that the following day. Um, there is in 2019, I decided I was going to completely re-strategize how I worked. I was working six days a week. I felt really spread out. Things just weren't making sense. I was paying a lot in labor. I had my van and all of this. So I consolidated everything down to one day a week. And you can easily work one day a week, especially when you're dealing with hospitality floral design, and it's still not compromise you know, your six-figure annual income. Very cool. I love it. So Francesca, do you have any favorite hotel floral moments that you've created and been involved with? Uh, I have several, but probably my top floral moment would be, um, I was based in London for a short time, a couple of years ago, and I actually got to do some of the flowers for the Corinthia London. I worked with an incredible team called By Appointment Only and have a lot of respect for them, but we would install actually in the middle of the night. So I would come downstairs at like 1 a.m. We would totally transform the entire hotel. It was very large installs. And then by 6 a.m., I think there was a team of like 10 of us, eight to 10 of us. By 6 a.m., we'd have to be out of the lobby because that's when guests were waking up and they were coming downstairs for their coffee or going out for a morning run or whatever it might be. But that right. was such a surreal moment because if anyone's familiar with the Corinthia London, it is actually one of the most beautiful hotels I've ever seen. And just to be part of their floral de designs, which is a pillar of their marketing was just a, a really, really humbling experience. Very cool. Anything here in the States? Ooh, uh, I would have to say being a Fairmont Dallas's artist in residence. So I was their last artist in residence. I was actually stationed, lived in the hotel for six months. And I opened a flower shop, a pop-up flower shop downstairs, and we handled all their floral design in-house as well. And so that was, um, that was a really fun experience. That's very cool. How did the, how did the pop-up flower shop piece go? That sounds like another interesting kind of take on approaching hotels. Definitely. It added a lot of value. They had a dead space in their lobby, which was literally a glass box. And I approached them and I just, and it was across from Starbucks. And I knew they were doing about $5,000 a day in, in sales at Starbucks. And it was all their downtown community. And I said, wouldn't it be amazing if we could transform this box into a flower shop, a pop-up flower shop and bring, you know, downtown business transient, uh, clientele into the shop and we could even do fun workshops or build your own bouquet. And as all these people are waiting in line for Starbucks, the line naturally goes into the flower and shop. And so it was a great value add for the hotel because it gave their guests something else to do. It also was an amenity to their guests. Other people could send flowers to the guests of the hotel. And so the shop did really, really well. And we did that for about six months. That's so fun. Very cool. I love it. Uh, Huntress Floral says, uh, appreciate your self-awareness to consolidate workflow to create life and work balance you want, a floral dream. And indeed oh, that yeah. is. I That's think we all kind of strive for that, having a balance that we can all live with and be happy with because it isn't all about work, right? You need to have yeah. moments to enjoy and, and do the things that you want to do outside of that. And I think in order to make that happen, you have to look at currently what's working and what's not working, but the things that aren't working to find the solution for them, they might not be what you think the solution should be or what other people are solving it by. We've created these businesses and we are the leaders in our business. And so a lot of times in order to create solutions that actually work for us, even at a personal level, we really have to think outside the box. And one example of this is, 
I was um, really struggling with balancing it all. Like I said, I consolidated to one day a week, but before that was so stretched thin. And I started looking at like, I'm paying all this extra for a van and I have like a 1500 square foot studio, but most of it houses bases for this one hotel account. And I'm paying, you know, extra technically four hours to two people just to like pack, load the van, drive the van, unpack, unload, and then reload it again and then clean it. And it was just, it didn't make sense. I mean, technically from the way we've been taught or technically from the way that other people do it, it did make sense. But I finally decided, okay, but what if we put everything inside the hotel? That meant that I could get rid of the van, at least, you know, for that account, I wouldn't necessarily have to have the 1500 square foot space. I wouldn't have to have those employees. And I did the math and it was literally like $20,000 on an annual basis that were just being spent on stuff. And right. so at that time, the hotel had recently obtained new ownership, which is sometimes tricky for established vendors because sometimes ownership wants new people in. And so I just approached the general manager and I just said, hey, our contract's up for renewal. What would you say if I could save you $20,000 like right off the bat? And he's just like, where do I sign? And I'm like, great, I need a small space. You're going to buy all your vases and that's it. And he's like, awesome. So that was a solution that made my life a lot easier, but it's, it's unheard of. Like nobody has done that. And so just remember that if you're struggling with this balance, the solutions might not be what works for everybody else. You might have to get a little bit creative on what would work for you. Such great advice. Um, I see a comment here on Instagram Live They from the Floral Hive. They ask, um, or they say, I love the hotel pop-ups so much. Did they serve as a venue as well? And I, I believe so, right? You said they had like a, a box like inside their, their space, right? So the Fairmont Dallas is a very big five-star luxury corporate hotel downtown Dallas. So they have multiple ballrooms and multiple outdoor spaces, but the glass box itself was just like an empty dead space that they hadn't really figured out what to do with it. In the past, they had like did some pop-up art galleries. So when we came in with the shop, we were able to utilize the space um, as far as to teach workshops. We also did our flower bar where people could come in and make their own bouquets by buying by the stem. But we also utilize ever other areas of the hotel. For example, they have a rooftop garden. And so, you know, we did a big PR and influencer night where we invited people out and we did a lot of flower activations upstairs in their rooftop garden. And so you technically become the extension of the hotel as part of their team and not necessarily like just another vendor. Right. Wow. I love it. You have so many amazing ideas. This is great. Um, yeah, someone said thank you for, let's see, it's um, Flora Danica, I think. Thank you for your insight into the corporate floral client. I love it. And even um, this is uh, Desi. I think it's like really little for me to read right now. Uh, she says, hello from Western North Carolina. All of this is great info and inspiration for growth. So this is great, really good stuff. Um, I before I, I wanted to, to leave just real quick, yeah. I was just thinking North Carolina because that's you know not a, a huge city like say in Miami, New York, Houston, LA, right. et cetera, is you have so many really cool boutique hotels. And even though they're not under a big brand, they're always trying to activate their community. The hospitality industry is really interesting in the sense that it's an extremely social business. It is there to simply serve others. And it is the only business that is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a week, you know, with the exception of airlines, et cetera. So if you feel like, oh, well, I'm just not in a big city, so this doesn't apply to me, or I don't have a big brand that I could work with, I would still do the exercise. Go get the coffee at the cute little boutique hotel. Ask to speak with the general manager. You have nothing to lose. Worst case, they're going to send you someone else to talk to. But ask to speak to the general manager. Say you want to introduce yourself. Like, hi, my name's Sally. I own Sally's Flowers. I have an amazing idea for Mother's Day. I wanted to speak to your general manager about this. Or they might send you a director of sales and marketing. But if you're always coming to the hotel with an activation that's going to tie them into the community and you can start getting your foot in that way, that is such a great resource and just also a test if you like even working with them, if you see any kind of future with them before just slamming down a proposal saying like, we only do hotel flowers. And so please don't write off corporate or hotels if you feel like you're in a smaller city. You, there's just a different way to strategize and support them. Such great advice. 
Um, I had another question, but now I it left me. So we'll see. We'll see what everyone else says. Um, we have a question in from Tony. She asks, a girl in Baton Rouge got burned for delinquent payments from a large casino. Have you ever had clients behind on payments? Really good question. That is a great question, Tony, and one that can happen. Uh, I think, again, going back to being a leader in your business, you have to create boundaries. And so if you are not getting paid for something, you should not be providing the service because the contract is breached. You are just as much a business as the hotel is a business. And I recently had um, a student actually in the Hotel Floors Profit Method who pitched to a hotel, landed the hotel. It's a very big brand. It's a it's a really great contract for her, but they were having a lot of issues internally with the payment and not necessarily because they didn't want to pay her, but let's be honest, it was probably at the bottom of their to-do list. And so after two weeks of not being paid and being told she was going to be paid, she installed a third week, still no payment. She literally came in and took all her flowers. And she's like, you know, I haven't been paid until I'm paid. I cannot actually render services. It goes against company policy. And what happened was she immediately had a credit card number in her hand. And they're like, just charge this credit card every single week until we sign the contract. And so, of course, things like this can come up. And I think that's one of the reasons florists are also scared because they're like, who are who are we? We're like the small fish in the big sea. But it is also how you conduct yourself. It's setting expectations. It's abiding to the contract. That's why there is one. I never recommend really agreeing to services until there's a contract. Um, so that is how I've never had clients behind on payments, but it's up, uh, up to us as business owners to decide how we handle that. And that's how she personally handled it. And that's how it worked out for her. Great advice. Um, I see another, first of all, we have someone watching from Russia and Holland. Hi guys. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I know I, I, I get a kick out of it literally every single time and this yeah, time I'm just of pointing it all out. I mean, this, there's some great people on here. Thanks guys for being yeah. here. You know, I love it. Um, so let's see, we have a question on Instagram live. They ask, where are some places to look to get ideas and inspiration for hotel floral design? So just like how you search for inspiration on um, Pinterest for weddings and events, you can do the exact same thing for corporate. I know when I was first starting, I found florists that were already serving hotels, either whether it was on Instagram, you can do hashtag hotel florists, hashtag hotel flowers, see what florists are tagging themselves there and then see, you know, does their design jive with what it is that you would like to produce? Does it give you inspiration? Does it feel like something that's in line with, you know, what you want to create as far as your signature? And then the other one would be on Pinterest, just simply, you know, searching hotel flowers, corporate flowers. And I would create just secret boards and pop them in there. And so I could get inspiration. But a lot of inspiration actually comes from seeing what's on the market itself. So um, personally, like, you know, every week it fluctuates. So like last, you know, this week when I installed pin cushions in Alstromeria, I had no design in mind when I ordered those things. I literally just ordered it because that's what had to happen because that was the only thing available. Um, and then after knowing that it's coming, then I start you know, drawing it out or thinking, okay, what bases do I have? How do I want to look, make this look? And then you can also turn around in either um, Google or again, search on Pinterest, like flower pin cushion and arrangements or hotels with pin cushion, or, you know, just, you'll start finding the best way to get inspiration. But I hope that those two um, avenues have, have got your wheels turning now. Yeah, I just real quick while you were talking, went to Instagram, typed in hotel flowers, and I shared the link with you guys so you can check out that feed. Um, that reminded me too. So you were talking about Alstro and pink cushions. That's what is available now. And yes, we've been talking about pretty much since COVID started that there are supply and logistic issues, right? So farms, some farms closed down, some like we all laid off people. Um, and that has, you know, obviously effects, especially down the road and in the future. And we're kind of feeling those effects right now from the beginning when the pandemic hit. So I think that's an interesting, you know, thing just to talk about a little bit more is, you know, wedding and event people, even sometimes daily people, 
get very stressed out about the flowers that are available versus not available, the supply of certain things, you know, like getting those toffee roses when everyone wants those toffee roses at the very same time, you know, that's a very stressful thing for people to go through. So you really don't have those stresses because you, it's not like you have, right? Like a hotel isn't saying I have to have this, right? It's a little bit different. And I have to say that, you know, Ryan put it perfectly. I, I have a podcast. It's called The Hotel Florist. And I was interviewing Ryan, the founder of Curate. You may or may not know the system, but we use it for our CRM and, and our proposals and things like that. And he said, creativity comes from constraint. And I absolutely love, love this quote because it couldn't be more true. And so we get choices. We can either choose to be super stressed out or we can choose to believe that this is going to make us an even better designer. And we become better designers the more quick we can think on our feet and kind of re-strategize or redo the vision that maybe we originally had. And oftentimes it's actually better than what we originally thought we were going to do. So even though I don't have necessarily the restriction of the specific colored rows, I do have the restriction on the quantity. And just to give you an idea on Monday, um, you know, we, I ordered, I, I can't remember, like, let's say 50 bunches of Alstro. And um, I got it, I figured out, I saw the invoice right before it got delivered that only 25 bunches were coming, but I still need 25 bunches of one color. That's kind of hard to just grab last minute. Um, and so I could choose to either be super stressed out about it, or I could be really proactive and just start calling around and trying to figure out, okay, well, if I can't get 25 more bunches of orange Alstro, then maybe we could change it to yellow and do kind of like a monochromatic sunshine theme and with orange and yellow or whatever it might be. So for me, it happens in quantity. Um, and the other thing I want to mention here is that whether it's with your wedding or event clients or your hotel clients, it's all about communication. And again, we are leaders in our business and our business is just as important as theirs. So on Monday, I already had the conversation with my general manager. I said, hey, just so you know, the floral industry right now on the supply chain management side is out of control. I don't know how else to explain it to you. Farms have shut down. Farms didn't plant as much as they should have. They didn't have the amount of money or time to hire and train. Bottom line is there's not enough flowers in the market right now. So we're doing the best we can to pull this off. But just as a reminder, when we negotiated this contract, that contract was based on a different year's number and a different year's availability in the market. I said, so what I'm going to do is try to make it look as full as possible, but you might notice there'll be weeks where it looks a little bit thin. And if that's an issue, then we need to reevaluate the budget. So he is right. fully aware of what's happening. And therefore I know that it cannot come back on us as designers that we're not fulfilling the contract hundred percent. So please remember that as business owners, we do have the responsibility to communicate with our clients, letting them know that, you know what, I'll do my best to get the toffee colored rose. Worst, worst case, it might be a beige rose. It might be a quicksand rose or, you know, give like three other examples. Right, right. No, I think I think that's really great advice. And again, yeah, you have the, the other struggle, finding enough product of one thing. Um, but the one thing that I love that my CEO, Patrick, says, and I, I'm sure he said it on the video that we uploaded lately, but he said, there are plenty of flowers. It just might not be the flowers that you are looking for. So yeah. We are, we are all, like I, all the wholesalers, I'm sure, are doing the same thing. And our purchasing department literally like working around the clock just to like buy everything that they possibly can. So that way there are enough flowers. But um, I think it's lovely that you don't have the stress of, of having like a specific thing because I think that's where people get kind of stuck in, in a lot of stress. And But I like your advice too about just being transparent about what's going on. I think that helps in every situation, um, whether you're a hotel florist or an event florist, you know? And it makes your client excited because they feel like they're part of something and they feel like it even increases the no like trust factor because it's that trust factor. They're like, okay, I know that you're already telling me there's an issue and I know you're not coming at me with a problem. You're actually already providing me the solution that you're working on and you're going to keep this communication open. So I know that there's not going to be any surprises. So it actually works in your favor, I feel like. 
Yeah, for sure. So I have another question here from Caviar Dreams LA. I like that. Um, is there a guide you recommend to learn which florals are best to use for longevity? I know we I asked about that earlier and you talked about your class. So I also wanted to give that time to also to you offer um free masterclass right now. So maybe you can talk about that and kind of tie it into answering that question as well. Definitely. So I offer a free masterclass on how to create consistent $5,000 a month. So you don't have to depend on unstable income. That was really important for me, especially when I first started my floral business and it's been a game changer. So in this masterclass, I specifically cover three mistakes that florists are making when they're approaching hotels. Um, there were the exact three mistakes I was making. And it wasn't until I kind of had to come to Jesus moment. And I'm like, what, what is going on here? And I, preach all about data over drama in our business. I was like, what's the data here? And it was these three mistakes. So in, um, in this masterclass, I talk about that. And then as far as the guide goes on what flowers to use, I personally haven't found anything on the market per se. I created a guide of 50 plus flowers I've personally used and how I've designed with them as part of my Hotel Floors Profit Method course. Um, the way the course is outlined is in three parts. It's how to land the hotel, how to design for the hotel, and then how to automate the hotel working that one day a week. And so in the design portion of the course is where I have that floral guide. However, the way I learned, like I mentioned before, is was really hands-on, but also utilizing your wholesaler, you know, asking your wholesaler what do you recommend that would last a long time? Now, the danger with that is I found a lot of wholesalers didn't really know and the recommendations they gave me were actually incorrect. But then I had some incredible wholesalers, like my first wholesale rep, I was so lucky and I think her to this day was Beth O'Reilly. And she taught me so much about flowers that she had used previously in her hotel career when she was a florist. And um, so you really use your wholesaler right now and, and ask and see, you know, if, if their information checks out. Very good. Shout out to Beth. Yeah. One of our Mayish design stars. She's amazing. Who went on to be on you know, the, what it, was it? Um, in full bloom, full bloom. I'm saying it wrong. I know I am. Bloom, yeah. Full bloom. <laughs> yeah. I just interviewed her for the podcast as well. So that that's going to be coming out, I believe next month. Oh, very cool. Very exciting. Um, our very own David Dolson is listening. Hi, David. And he had nice, just kind of echoing what you saying, what you said earlier. He said, I highly recommend in negotiations that you go um, all out to a secure room or space in the hotel where you can keep containers and materials and also do work, change out water, et cetera. So. Absolutely. David, this is a game changer. I was, um, right when COVID hit, I was actually in Australia freelancing for uh, Matthew Landers. He's a very big Australian florist who also has hotel accounts. And he had a whole kitchen basically that literally on the door said florist. And so you'll find again, some hotels support this. They'll have a room specifically for their florists. I know Corinthia hotels does because it's such a big part of their brand standards, but other hotels may not. I mean, the hotel that I currently have space in, I asked for that space for two to three years. And it wasn't until I showed financial proof of why it would be viable to give me that space was when they would actually listen and we came up with a plan. Um, but if you can, I highly would recommend trying to get space in the hotel because it will just make your logistics so much easier and you're going to be able to serve your client, um, I feel like a lot better. Very good. Um, Flora Danica asked if we have a link for the podcast. So I put that in the comments section. Um, I'm also just gonna link, I have a bunch of links. so. Um, for Francesca's Hotel Flores website, you can check that out, Instagram and Facebook. So I will put those links in the comments for you guys. And they'll be up on our blog as well for future reference. So that way you guys can connect with Francesca. Um, yeah. Is there any other closing thoughts that you want to leave with as we're wrapping up? Definitely. I feel like I've talked to a lot of florists who haven't felt that felt that only wedding and event business was the only way to go. And I just want to say that I think it's an incredible 
industry, the floral industry at large is incredible because there's so many different avenues that you can explore. I personally really enjoyed my time with weddings and events. My brides, my clients were very, very special to me, but I love the corporate side of things. My degree is in hotel and restaurant management. I worked in hotels before I started my floral business, both on property and corporate level. So I know the industry of the hospitality through and through, and it is what feels in alignment for me. However, as I'm sure you can tell, even from this quick you know, 45 minutes together, that it really is an industry disruptor. It's not something that people had ever really considered before. And it's been a couple of years now that I've been doing it 100% as the hotel florist, and it's just now taking off. So if there's something that you really inspires you that you really feel in alignment with, I just say, go after it. Um, corporate, especially is a great way to get that consistent income while you're trying to grow your business. Um, also retail, and I know when it comes back is would be very strong. But you know, Tiffany and Co. were their Texas state florists. They literally pay us in full for the year and we handle all their stores. So it's just these accounts just help you sleep at night and they also help you build your business into what it is that you've always dreamed of it to be. So I'm just saying I'm cheering you on and I'm so excited for your floral journey. I love it. I feel like people are very excited. So guys, I hope you do connect with Francesca after this live. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Francesca, for sharing all of your amazing knowledge, insight, and inspiration. Such a great show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for everyone being here. I can't wait to connect with you later on. I'm always in my messages, direct messages on Instagram. So let's just go hang out and chat and go and check out my free masterclass. Let me know what you think. Yes, definitely check it out. So guys, that is a wrap on today's Mornings with Mayesh. Next week, I have Gilberto. He's going to be back on to chat about his brand new video. If you have not seen it, it is literally like a symphony with flowers. And it's all about Dutch design. So super amazing. Um, check it out. Also, the week after that, I have Derek and Michael Putnam, Putnam and Putnam. They're going to be joining me. Let me grab it real quick because I have it sitting next to me to talk about their new book, Flower Color Theory. It is, just give you a peek inside, random picture. So cool. Um, so they're going to be ch chatting about their new book and it's going to be really, really great. So thank you again. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.